Olive branches are for peace. Palm branches are for victory. Palms are for winners. You know the story of Palm Sunday, how donkey riding God rides over the palms, but it changes how you see the ones who threw them down, though. He rode into town to the palm leaves that were thrown down by the crowd who today will yell, Hosanna, save us, but will yell, crucify in a week. The first ones to lay them down were the apostles who just couldn't be prouder to find him a donkey to ride on, only to deny him three times like Peter. Like our confirmands today in church who promise to risk all, even death, rather than fall away from this faith, but surely aren't here because someone just told them they're old enough to decide for themselves whether or not their faith was important to them, and they listened. The disciples who would abandon him when the soldiers come with their swords and torches are next, whose confessions of faith wither not just at violence of martyrdom, but just sort of the simple reality that theirs might just be the minority opinion, like a church that measures success in terms of popularity instead of faithfulness. The next ones to lay them down will be the miracles, Lazarus raised from death. Then the ones who find all the right words to say in public but refused to do his will at home like the whitewashed tombs called Pharisees, like Christians who pick a sin that they are not committing and decided that, you know, could be worse as a measure of righteousness instead of the Lord's word, as if the religion centered on finding a bigger sinner than you and then standing on their neck to prove to God that you are taller. Marching in the parade are the ones who fought each other over who is the greatest and then wrote books with subtle snobs against each other like John, or as he insists on calling himself, the apostle whom Jesus loved just to annoy Peter. They are brothers and sisters in Christ who nurture petty grudges, claiming superiority is more important than reconciliation in Christ. I can't help but wonder if the insurrectionist Barabbas would have been there, all that prison stuff notwithstanding, because the idea of a religion that addresses politics before souls is all too appealing in a world where you don't get your own way, even if it does completely miss the point. The traitor Judas is there, and since he is introduced as the one who would betray him, we can go ahead and save ourselves the trouble of actually having to be concerned for his fall at all. After all, there are sinners, and then there are sinners, and why would these souls be more concerning than object lessons to the rest of us? Don't forget the ones who just go nameless, like Peter's assistant, who we will eventually figure out is Mark, who runs away naked. Behold the glorious band. This is the heavenly band that Jesus rode into Jerusalem to. This is the heavenly band that he rode into Jerusalem for. This is the church. This is us. His disciples did not understand these things at first. We still struggle with it. This cannot possibly be worth dying for. This death can't make sinners like these whole. It can't possibly be enough except for the fact that it was. When Jesus was glorified upon the cross, they remembered Not just what had happened, but that all of it was for them. Jesus remembered them upon the cross. He died for the apostles and the disciples. He died for Peter, who denied Judas, who betrayed even naked Mark. He died for the criminal Barabbas so that he could escape death. He died for the Pharisees because, as it turns out, he wasn't arguing with them because it was fun to win, but because he actually wanted to help. One came to bury him in faith, and he died for you. These are the ones who lay down palms of victory, because palms are for winners. It just doesn't look like much until you see them waved again in heaven. Behold the glorious band. We hear the palm branches later in Revelation. The great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. We are the ones hosannaed, saved us, The sinners who, by faith alone in the crucified God, would wave palm branches of victory in heaven before the throne. Instead, we get to lay down our excuses and our self-justification like you get to lay down your palms. This is your victory. Now Jesus is your victory. Now the crowd who today yells, Hosanna, save us, will yell, crucify in a week. But that's just because that's how he does it. He dies upon the cross to give victory to losers, to sinners, to cheats and unmentionables, to me, to you, to all. Go to church because it's Holy Week. The end.